flights from New Zealand are usually considered low risk for any illegal activities. But Customs and Border Protection officers have pulled aside this passenger after he attempted to bribe an officer. First up, before any examination has even started, the guy has asked if he was to give the officer $100 cash here and now, would he let them out the door? Officer David confronts the passenger. Do you understand? And the first thing you did right off the bat was offer this guy a bribe to let you out of here? Yeah. OK. Yeah. And do you understand um, no. that that may cause us to start thinking that you might be concealing something from customs? Excuse me? I think you understood my question. You figured it'd be a pretty smart thing to do to offer this guy a bribe to let well, you I... out the door fast. Yeah, because I wasn't sure when I'm going to get this next flight. Yep. I mean, can we uh, do something to um, organise that flight or verify we, that we don't it's still going flights. today? What or? we do okay. is we risk assess passengers mm -hmm. to see if they pose any risk to the Australian border. And when that process is complete, you leave and then you yeah. deal with your flights yourself. And we don't delay you any longer than we need to. But, but the process of determining if you are any kind of a risk or not takes as long as it takes, OK? Officers are taking the situation very seriously. So he's offered him a bribe, fair and square. It immediately creates um, some suspicion about what this fella is all about. I've never seen anyone offer a bribe here before. An American musician has arrived on an entertainment visa that will allow him to tour and perform in Australia. But immigration is concerned by his criminal past that he failed to declare when he first applied for the visa. Now, firstly, did you declare the criminal convictions in your application form? I didn't actually fill out my visa application form. It was filled out by the tour manager. Marcus, did you actually sign the form? The visa application form, no. Did you fill this passenger card yourself? Yes. Is this your signature? Yes. OK, you did answer yes to uh, criminal convictions here. Yes. And why have you come to Australia? I've come to do a series of performances and workshops with the Hypnotic Brass Ensemble. And what is your role in the band? What do you do? I play drums. The other band members have crossed the border and are waiting anxiously. Well, you're looking at the, the world's next biggest thing. Hypnotic Brass Ensemble, we're from the south side of Chicago. This is a family band, we're all blood brothers. Marcus, we've been playing with him for almost a year now. Uh, maybe about two tours we've done with him. But now they may have to do without him. With false declarations on his visa application, he'll almost certainly be refused entry. These are all your signatures on the yeah. cards, is that correct? Yeah. OK, you understand? A family from Indonesia has nine bags between them. No food has been declared, but the X-ray shows otherwise. First bag's got some sort of food in here. Again, other packaging food in this suitcase as well. You filled all these cards in, did yeah. you? I, I and who ticked all these no? Yeah. yeah. OK, we're going to look at your bags. Yeah. Because okay. we found some stuff in the X-ray that we're not too sure about, all right? Have you travelled to Australia before? No. Is that? Some fruit. No, no good. No, fruit okay. is no good. Okay. It hasn't been declared. Carries diseases such as the citrus canker. So this is fried chicken in here, is it? Yeah. This is prohibited. You just can't bring in meat into the country. You're coming from Indonesia? That region? has had bird flu, there is a risk of so bringing in diseases and viruses we'll with this type of okay. food. We're not talking about one tiny drumstick, we're talking about whole, at least four kilos of fried chicken into Australia. Yeah, this is not okay. No, it's not okay. It's definitely not all right. In Sydney, this passenger has attempted to bribe his way out of a bag search, claiming he has to catch a connecting flight. I know that people might think this is fine from Christchurch, but good deal. Okay. Officers believe he has not been completely forthcoming, 
So they decide to test his belongings for any traces of illegal substances. Meanwhile, Officer David wants to conduct a frisk search. Sure. I want you to read this card, read both sides of the card. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm going to detain you and organise for an officer to do a search of you. Yeah. Now, so you consent to a search? Yeah. You're happy to do it here? Yeah. Okay. Did you want to take your jacket off just to make things a little bit easier? Or? Yeah. Well. So he's going to explain to you what he's going to do. Just stay there. So the gentleman who did the first search, he tells me that he didn't detect anything that gave him any concerns. However, just mm -hmm. based on our interaction with you so far, the things that we've discussed, mm -hmm. I still do have concerns, okay. okay? So what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about detaining you to send you to hospital and have you have them do an ultrasound on you. That's what we do here. And that's what I'm considering doing with you. An entire band is waiting for their drummer to clear immigration. Officers are investigating the criminal convictions that he failed to declare on his original entertainment visa application. Marcus, now I'm going to talk to you about um, the actual con uh, criminal conviction. Can you tell me what happened, what was the incident and what really happened? I was about 19 years old and I respected this guy. One night he called me and asked me to drive. He and his brother got in the car and they had weapons and they wanted me to drive them to try to find somebody to stick up. They never really robbed anybody, but we got pulled over later that night and we had weapons in the car. So um, we all got in trouble. My fingerprints weren't on any of the weapons and I was sentenced to attempted robbery. What did the judge actually The judge sentenced sentence? me to uh, six years uh, how long did you actually serve? Nine weeks. Nine weeks? Yes. It's time for Raj to discuss the case with duty manager Linda. I don't know. Six years is a long sentence. Six years is a long sentence. Uh, the conviction was for an attempted robbery, so that is taken seriously. And that's a serious offense. Uh, that's a serious offense. It seems the hypnotic brass ensemble may lose their drummer before the tour has even started. Every band, your bass and your drum is like the heartbeat. Without that piece, you're really missing a good 40 to 50% of your sound. Uh, it'll be embarrassing to go home until everybody in Australia kick me out. And uh, it'll also be two weeks of work that I will have missed out on. So um, I don't want to get sent back home. Thousands of packages go through the mail center in Sydney every day. Most of them pass screening, but all it takes is something slightly unusual to draw the attention of Customs and Border Protection. Officer David has noticed something different on the X-ray of this express mail package. Um, it's caught me eye, so we've got all this organic stuff in there. The light stuff, you can tell it's some sort of fabric material, maybe. Uh, the dark stuff here looks, looks more like a concealment of some sort of organic matter. All suspicious packages are opened by Australia Post before Customs and Border Protection can investigate further. We'll have a look, see what's inside it. There you go. It's a uh, it's like some sort of costume mask. It's another one. I haven't really seen this sort of stuff come through the post before. This probably explains why I saw the material on the uh, X-ray. But uh, as for those dark patches. It could be stuffing inside the mask, but then again, it could be organic, could be narcotics, so still have to have a closer look. Officer Dave will now X-ray one of the heads. See if there's any dark organic patches. What is your, what do you think, what, when we say food, what do you think food means? Everything you eat. Yeah. Quarantine officers have already found four kilos of home-cooked chicken in this family's luggage. And now 
there's even more. Just ask them what it is, and they're saying that it's uh, that it's beef. So of course we're um, it's uh, it's not allowed to be brought into the country in absolutely no way, and that they haven't declared it. Um, this is just not on. No. When did your mother cook this food? When? Uh, two days ago. You want me to try? No, I don't want you to try it. No. Definitely not. This passenger says he has filled out all the landing cards for his family. Now he could be the one facing a hefty fine. Meat is not allowed to be brought into Australia. More importantly, you failed to declare that question six about food. And you've ticked no. But you've plainly got this fried chicken in your bag. So there's no excuse. Destroy it. Of course we're going to destroy it. But in this instance, we're also going to give you on the spot fine penalty of $220. As the man heads off to pay the fine, his wife makes a last-minute confession. The spouse of the person who was fined has made admissions to me that she filled the cards in and they didn't say yes because they want to actually keep this beef curry for their mother. Uh, she's led to believe that they can't make or buy that kind of beef in Australia and that's why they said no to the questions, hoping they wouldn't be detected by quarantine. six years and the judge told me that under a shock clause he'd let me get a taste of jail because he figured that I was not a bad guy but I was too easily influenced by my peers and that uh, maybe if I got a taste of what it was like to be locked up it would be all I needed to not have to get in trouble ever again and if I stayed out of trouble while I was locked up he let me out in time to go back to college and that's what happened. It was just an unfortunate, stupid mistake I made when I was young, trying to figure out how to be a man. And I'm glad that it uh, didn't take me that long to figure out that wasn't the right way. It was also a big mistake to let his tour manager fill out his visa application. You declared no, that you did not have criminal convictions. Now, you said you did not fill that part. I did not fill yeah. out this form. And I was not aware that she answered mm -hmm. that way, because I did send her my criminal history. Okay. Is that your signature on the form? Yes. Um, Tinku faxed this page to me only. Mm -hmm. uh, he emailed this to me so that I can print it out, sign it, and scan it and send it back to her. I actually didn't see the whole uh, application, only this page. Oh, so you haven't seen the whole application at all, just right. that declaration part of the form? Correct. OK. Uh, apparently, it seems that the promoter has uh, uh, intentionally or unintentionally provided wrong information to the Department of Immigration on your application form on your behalf. Okay, so we're not really sure who's telling the truth. Either way, Marcus is in trouble, but his band's not giving up hope. You, you, you don't know until the ink is dry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's gonna really, it's really gonna ruin my day, man, if they don't let the drama through. Uh, So is there anything you want to tell me about no. being a fence? No? No. I'm not asking you a serious question. I'm not laughing. Yeah, um... Yes, I know. Officers are talking to a passenger who offered to bribe an officer. A frisk search and a swab test are negative, but officers need to be sure he is not carrying any illegal substances internally. So if I detain you to send you to hospital to have mm. an internal examination mm. conducted, mm. as in via X-ray ultrasound? No, I don't, if, I'd rather not. OK, so if you didn't give consent, then mm. what I would then do mm. is I'll get the Australian Federal Police to go to a magistrate's court and they will say, we've got this fella here, Dave's oh, detained okay. him, oh, no, we need no, consent. Fine, yeah. So the no, magistrate no, 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 no. will then yeah, decide. Okay. Okay, okay, no, that's fine. No consent to that. Yeah. Officer David decides to consult his supervisor before they make their final decision. We've done his bags, mm -hmm. we've frisked them. Mm -hmm. At this stage, we have nothing. If you think there's something further you need to pursue, then you have to make the decision of whether or not it's an internal matter. If it's not internal, you've done everything you can do externally, what's your options? 
a little yeah, yeah, heads yeah. up for you. Just... Next time you are in the company of any kind mm. of law enforcement official at all, do not offer them a bribe. So don't try that one again. Mm -hmm. OK? You're good to go. We're giving him the benefit of the doubt that it wasn't his intention to um, interfere with a judicial process. He was simply just trying to expedite his trip through the customs baggage hall. As far as our risk assessment process is concerned, you know, you can you can never know 100%, but we did carry out a very thorough risk assessment of him, and we did not feel that we had any actual cause to detain him any longer, and so we let him go. At the Sydney Mail Centre, Officer Dave is about to find out if these costumes from South America are as innocent as they appear. This shows three definite concealments of some sort of organic matter. It does worry me that it could be something other than stuffing, quite possibly narcotics. I think um, our lines itemise it, take a swab of the outsides. The itemizer machine picks up traces of any illegal substances that may be concealed inside. There you go. Yeah, drugs detected, cocaine. This is saying that there is cocaine in there. Definitely looks like some sort of organic concealment within the mask. I'm pretty confident to cut it open and see exactly what it is. It's the only way we're going to find out. At Sydney Airport, this Chicago jazz band is still hopeful their drummer Marcus will be allowed through immigration. To me, when I look at uh, Mr. Evans, I see a father. Like, all of, most of us are fathers. I see a, a good man, and I think that um, there's no way we can, like he said, we can give y'all our all without our drummer. Officer Raj has found evidence supporting Marcus's claim that his visa application was filled out by his tour manager. As we can see that uh, this is uh, part of the same application form. Um, the declaration form is, has got uh, a smaller font than the rest of the actual uh, application. Uh, so what it looks like is that uh, this form was probably scanned or emailed uh, to the passenger and uh, was signed and sent back. We'll have to refer this up. I mean, six years for a serious offence, and then he's coming here for a series of concerts, he's is that correct? He's coming here for about two weeks, a couple of concerts, yeah. You know, there's a lot to lose yeah. here if he has his visa cancelled. We've got all those band members out there and no drummer. Correct. So that's yeah. going to just completely ruin what their plans are. So there is a lot at stake in this case. The final decision will now be made by the airport manager. We just have to wait and see. Somebody will make a decision and, and let us know. But it doesn't look real good right now, I must admit. At the Sydney Mail Centre, Officer Dave is deconstructing this costume mask after an X-ray indicated it may hide a concealment. A swab has also tested positive for traces of cocaine. Some sort of package inside here. Looks like two bits of foam stuck together. Uh, if I just pull them apart, you can see some sort of package inside wrapped in red paper. Yeah, it's a little bit of a smell there too. Um, yeah, cocaine's got a fairly distinct smell. Yeah, you can see some sort of white powder inside underneath the red paper. Yeah, definitely, definitely shouldn't be there. Thinking it's cocaine, might just take a little sample out of that and test it on the street lab and see what that comes back as. Oh, I need a little tiny bit. The machine will analyse the powder and reveal if it is an illegal substance. There you go, there's a reading of 1.000 for cocaine, which is the highest reading you can get. So it was good concealment, a lot of work gone into it, but um, 
Yeah, I mean, the x-ray showed the dark patches on it. Yeah, it made me suspicious. The cocaine seized had an estimated street value of more than $415,000. At Sydney Airport, the hypnotic brass ensemble is facing the prospect of a tour without their drummer. Well, Marcus should be allowed in a day because when hypnotic comes, what we do is we get the party started. And if they let him out here, what they will see is a 100% display of hypnotic at its best, at its finest. Now, we have consulted the airport policy uh, and uh, the airport manager. Uh, I have come to this decision today that we will be immigration clearing you today. Given that you are a prominent member of the band and you may be a low risk uh, to the Australian community. We will be checking your criminal history and if you find that you have been lying to us uh, during the stage that you did not actually uh, in unintentionally fill that form correctly, um, then we may actually uh, cancel your visa here on shore. And so the long, anxious wait is over for Marcus's band. Appreciate it. I know y'all did a lot of strenuous work. You know, you had to contemplate with a lot of different people. You know, did, did you call President Obama? <laughs> Next week on Border Security. I think you may be concealing something on your body. Officers confront a feisty passenger. Whatever, I'll do it. I'll it's... get butt naked if you want. She attempts to prove that she has nothing to hide. Definitely something in there. An exotic carpet reveals a sinister secret. They've gone to a lot of hard work to do it. You said you're running a hotel. And a family struggles to get their facts straight. The mother and the son know nothing about the hotel. That's border security.